What's stopping you from being with a person you love? For him my feelings were a joke. I still remember his ugly dirty smirk when I broke down crying and was in pain because he cheated on me with my best friend for the 10,293,939th time even after I stopped him. Three years have passed by I haven't talked to him but whenever I see him pass by my heart still skips a beat all I know is I deserve to either be with no one or someone way better. She was my first and we were too young. It never worked out for us because of bad timing even though that thing is always there. Somehow I will always have this lingering hope that we will end up together. Even though I recently met a girl I am crazy in love with and this feeling has pretty much disappeared to the background. I broke up with him two years ago because I didn't know how to make it work given my anxiety disorder. I needed to grow and work on communication and find myself. But now he's with someone else and I am heartbroken. She's dealing with mental health issues. Has become severely apathetic and has withdrawn from the world. Won't speak or see me. I just remind her I'm here for her and I don't know how else to be supportive. Was the most empathetic person I've ever known before that. Maybe so much so that she'd take others' pain as her own and now it overloaded and shut her down. So I fell in love with boy. And one summer he told me he liked me back. Well his ex starts trying to get back with him. But he told he that she wasn't a problem. I should have seen this as a red flag. Also all my friends told me not to mess around with this boy because he was a fuck boy. Anyways he talks loads of shit on his ex. But would spend time with her all the fucking time. Long story short he gets back with her. And didn't even have the fucking balls to tell me that he didn't want me. It sounds a bit stupid I know. But this boy was and still is the only person I ever truly loved. They forget to breathe? Those that forgot are probably not around to answer. Sometimes. When I'm talking. Yes all the time. The transition from automatic to manual breathing and back is such a weird feeling emo. Usually when I have an anxiety attack coming on. Usually no. But sometimes if I'm focused on something and tense up. My breathing becomes shallower and sometimes it's as if I'm not breathing. So I have to notice that and manually inhale deeply a couple of times. Usually happens when playing Dark Souls and the both me and the boss are low on HPXD. Yep. Usually when I'm sick and my nose is completely plugged. I'll try to sleep and just get dizzy slash lightheaded. Also woken up a few times not breathing. Ladies that daydream. What do you usually daydream about? Time rewinding at least 11 years to redo my life with intact memories. Winning the lottery, and how I would spend it. What kind of superpowers I would have, and how I would use them. Places I want to travel. My intrusive thoughts making frequent appearances. Writing slash story ideas, won't ever write them down due to my thought process being more movie slash comic style than word based and too vivid to accurately write down. Food. Punching a customer. You know random stuff. Starting my own business where I create a clothing line for people with disabilities and other ethical issues. I want to be an entrepreneur where I work to support companies that are helping the planet. I want to work with a non-for-profit organization that helps to track down sexual predators who target children and take care of children and women and men who've been a victim of human trafficking. I just want to be stable with my finances where I can help other people. Traveling. Lots and lots of traveling especially embarking on road trips with a loved one or future lover. Flourishing financially semicolon being involved in a successful soul satisfying career. Reaching my fitness goals and feeling at peace with the vessel I inhabit. I really miss being in love semicolon being excited about someone and all of that jazz as well but I try not to linger on that thought too hard. A big enough house so that I have my own dedicated space for my hobbies only. None EOF my husband's hobby stuff. Paintings or lamps allowed. Somewhere where my loom can always be set up. My color pencils neatly organized. Books on shelves. Needlework supplies organized in neat compartments. Yarn dresser set up and my gnome family set up. Second date as a fat guy? Overweight guys aren't usually my type. But I actually really, really liked a guy once who happened to be so. He was 5 feet 10 inches and around 225 pounds. But I found his confidence, masculinity and intelligence to be super attractive. Basically, I liked him for him. I actually really enjoyed cuddling with him and found his stomach to be like a nice pillow lol. Also it was comfy to be on top during sex because his legs were sturdy but also had some fluff to it. I think if the girl really likes you then your weight won't bother her. It is way more comfortable to cuddle with a large man with more lipids than a cut guy with a six pack. Obese? Nay. Nay. You're the big guy that girls feel protected by with a heart of gold and an unflappable easygoing personality. You are the target all girls wish to achieve. Use your power thoughtfully and save a few ladies for the rest of us sub 5 feet 7 inches dudes that have to work hard. As a bodybuilding hobbyist I'm lean and unusually muscular. My girlfriend is about as overweight as you are. I absolutely love that she's soft and round and plump. I love cuddling with her. I love her body. I love seeing her naked. If she wants a second date. She's interested in you and your physique isn't a negative for her. She probably prefers big men like you. Many women do. If she's already down with coming to your house. Don't worry about it. You might be the big teddy bear of her dreams. Not for nothing. I'm an obese woman and my fiancé prefers when my body is in the way of cuddling because it's not in the way. It's part of me. That's just your body dude. Don't shame yourself. You're a big and tall dude. Own it. You run a small inconvenience store. What do you sell? 
It would just be a store full of earbuds where only the right earbud works. The left earbud doesn't work at all. Has constant static. Or is like way quieter than the right. Apart from earbuds they also sell Bluetooth speakers. But only to assholes who plan to use them on public transportation to share their shitty music with the masses. Economy size of everything a normal convenience store would have without the economy sized price. Would you like a 5 gallon jug of milk? That's $85. Need gas? We only sell it in 20 gallon increments. Chocolate bar? Our 5 pound candy bars are over there. Starting at $50 a pace. Just want a bite sized Laffy Taffy? The pieces we have are 3 feet long. They're $18. Safety razors where all the blades are facing the wrong way. Bottles of soda that have already had the carbonation let out. Deodorant. But only the kind that makes your pits feel too wet and leaves stains on your shirts. Liquor. But only the non-alcoholic brands. Those hot dogs that have been rolling in the display case for 8 years. No buns. Hot. Crappy coffee with no creamer or sugar provided. Off-brand beef jerky that's way too chewy. By the way. We only accept cash. Standard home appliances which all have unique quirks which impact performance. Toaster, any setting higher than mildly warm will result in charcoal. Oven, it will warm 1 degree every minute. And reset if opened. Dishwasher, all dishes must be rinsed completely before loading. Air conditioner, 87 or 65 degrees. And they swap randomly. Television, percussive maintenance must be performed on the side every hour. Otherwise the entire screen will be lime green.